Okay, welcome to my second Windows 2008 Silver tutorial. And for this tutorial, we'll actually install the operating system. So let's click on or power on my virtual environment, my 2008. I'm going to select this option here. All right, so I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go forward now with this wizard and I'm going to click Next. Now what I need to do is to find my ISO. How did I find my ISO? I actually selected this option here and I went to add ISO and then I looked for this Windows 2008 ISO that I already had as an image file on my hard drive. Um, I guess uh, in one of my tutorials I might teach you all how to do an ISO but for now I show you, you all could go into several different areas that you could get these ISOs from. Nonetheless, let's, let's move on. So I'm going to select my ISO Windows 2008. I'm going to select select. And what I'm going to do now is to click next and then finish. And this entire system should be running now in the background. So I'm going to select it here. And you're going to see my Windows 2008 is actually loading up in its environment. So I'm just going to just bring it here a little bit. Right, it's going to start. All right, um, Windows 2008. So I'm going to select the default option English. And I'm also going to select United States. If I wish, I could probably um, uh, go in here, capture my mouse. I can actually get into this environment here. Right, so if you realize I cannot go outside of this environment, then I'm going to click next and I'm going to start to install this operating system. Now, as it goes through the processes, I may stop and pause for you all to see what is taking place. Or I might even want to hold on my control key on my keyboard for a little while so I can actually, you know, come out of the virtual box and if I want to get back in. I just click there again in any one of this open area and the capture box is going to come up. All right. Now, what is all of this? Data center, enterprise standard, uh, silver core, where you could either have it in standard enterprise and so on. Anyhow, I am going to select the enterprise edition, but I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the data center and the silver core edition. Well, the Silver Core Edition actually is a command line interface. And I would actually have to install the Silver Core interface to show you how, you know, um, it's like a DOS prompt, like how Unix used to be long time. So for those who don't know about MS-DOS and Unix and so on, especially if you're doing any green computer science, uh, I think you should switch, like what I said earlier, to probably, um, you know, a business or something like that. But nonetheless... So Silver Core is really, you know, a uh, way you can install um, a, a very minimal installation of um, Windows 2008, but it would, would be minus the graphical user interface, so you'd have to use a lot of switches. So this is really for people like me, not like you who just watching, you know, this video for the first time, now because it's not like if you're real good at doing switches anyway. However, uh, the data center now is like, a big explosion where the industry is concerned especially when it makes reference to um, virtualization the whole concept of um installing um 2008 as a data center with several virtual machines and so on so i guess you all could probably go online and just type windows silver 2008 data center versus the enterprise edition and you'll get a lot of more information all right so i'm going to select this option here windows 2008 uh, enterprise fully installed. I'm going to click next. All right, I'm going to select this option here. I, ac I accept all these agreements because if I don't, it is not going to install. All right, and then I'm going to select this option here because I'm not going to upgrade because I never had it on before there anyway. So, and then again, I don't like upgrading servers, but it has its benefits. But I prefer to install it from scratch. So, I'm going to go to custom and select this option. Uh, this is my unallocated space that I had reserve for the installation on this virtual machine now i just want to talk a little about, about these drive options because you could actually use this you could actually create uh, these options at the bottom here i mean to create a new uh, uh you know partition 
So for those who knows about partition, um, um, like logical drives and so on, so you can select this option and you can actually put, um, uh, you know, um, divide up your partitions and so on. But I would not do that. I'm going to keep this at default because I already, you know, have this 20 gigabyte storage space and other things that I would want to install when the server is up and running. So I guess whenever you all install an operating system, it's always best to have two uh, um, logical drives and install your operating system on, on one, which would normally be flagged as the C. And then the other one, you could probably put all your data, um, your data and stuff now. Just an event if your machine was to crash, it will really crash on um, the C partition alone. All right, so let's move forward and click next. All right, and there it is. It begins to copy and expand those files. So I guess we will just have to sit down and wait. As you can see, the files is still expanding. And then after, we're going to install the features, uh, install updates, and then complete installation. So let's pause the video for now and wait until it does all of this. And then we come back. All right. Now, before it actually reaches this stage, um, during the installation process, your machine would restart a couple of times. All right, so we're not going to pick up from where we left off before. So I'm going to select this option OK, and I'm going to have to click in here and actually to get my mouse captured. And then click the option OK. And I have to create an administrative password. Now I'm just going to use the default uh, password that, uh, well, I shouldn't say default, but like a, a, a password that you could use. But it has certain restrictions in terms of your password. So I'm going to click, uh, my password is going to be capital P. And then I'm going to um, use the at sign as an A. And then I'm going to set type SSW0RD. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. Capital P, at sign SSW0RD. Because you must uh, have these password conventions in order for it to be accepted. All right, so mine is accepted and server is installed and it is preparing my desktop environment. And as you could see, um, right, as you could see, uh, my desktop environment is loading. Oh, I actually have the internet is on as well because, you know, um, my, um, so I could actually browse the internet inside here too as well. And it's supposed to now come up with the initial, uh, what you call the server manager or the configuration task and so on. All right. So when next we come back, we're going to explore server manager and look at rules and features.